Now I just want to close off here by getting back to the different regression models we're going to talk about throughout the course and uh, wrap things up and put a little bow on them. So first I just want to point out regression models. What they are is a simplification of the reality that highlights some aspects while ignoring others. Okay, so it's important to remember this, that what we do is try and take a lot of complex data and boil it down to a few simple things, right? So we end up ignoring certain um, things in the data and oversimplifying it, but there's um, a good thing to oversimplifying data, right? It allows us to really hone in and look at certain things. So just to give an example of what I mean by that is we said that regression models generally look like this. Some outcome is B0 plus B1X1 plus B2X2 and so on. Okay, so what we're doing is taking a complex set of data and we're trying to really oversimplify it and say these coefficients here, B0, B1, B2, they can tell us everything we need to know about that outcome. And of course, that's not completely true. There's other variables, other factors, other things that are being ignored in this analysis. But one big benefit of it is we can take some quite complex data and we can try and describe relationships between variables using just a few coefficients. Right? So again, taking data that can be hundreds or thousands or millions of observations and boiling it down to a few model coefficients and their standard errors and a few other things that can try and really describe the relationship um, in this data. Another quote I like is from a statistician, George Box. Um, same theme, he said, all models are wrong, but some are useful. So I thought this is a really, um, it's always stuck with me, and I've, I've always thought of it as an extension of this in my head, all theory is wrong, but some is useful. Right? So again, theories are oversimplifications of reality, but they really help us oversimplify it and understand the reality. So tying into what we were talking about previously about um, experiments versus observational studies. When looking at um, experiments, we may include other variables, x2, x3, x4, and so on. So remember we said our goal is to look at what effect does x1 have on the outcome, right? And when building an effect size model. We might choose to include these other variables. Um, so doing this can increase the accuracy or decrease the standard error of B1. So they can increase the accuracy of the effect size estimate B1. Okay, so again, if X2, X3, X4, if there are other good predictors of that outcome, having them in the model is again to give us more certainty in the effect that X1 has on the outcome. So that's going to be a reason for including other variables. Right? In, in theory, if we've randomly assigned people to treatment A or treatment B, that's the only variable we really need to try and estimate the effect that the treatment has on the outcome. But including these other variables um, can increase the accuracy or there can be other reasons for doing that. In observational studies, we might decide to include other variables, x2, x3, x4, and so on. And remember we were saying that the estimated effect, b1, right, the estimated effect of x1 on y might be biased due to confounding or, or other factors. So these can provide control for confounding and so on. Okay, so they can decrease the bias. Right, so remember, observational study, B1 is always going to be biased. Right? Our estimate of the effect of X1 on the outcome is always going to be a bit biased. We can try and decrease that bias by adjusting for confounders and other factors that we'll talk about through the course. Um, now, one note I want to make is that most of the data we work with the outcome, or the y variable, have been measured on an individual level. Right? So we recorded it for each person, if the outcome has happened or not, or if the outcome's numeric, um, what that numeric value is for each person. 
So we recorded it on an individual level, and therefore it must be summarized. So I want to talk about the four types of outcomes we're going to mainly look at in this course. The type of outcome variables we're going to look at is where y is numeric, so some numeric outcome, where y is binary, so a 0 or 1, where our y is a number of occurrences, so how often did some event occur, or where outcome is a time till an event. Um, survival times or waiting times, how long until something happens. Okay. Now all these need to be summarized in some way. Okay. Suppose the outcome we're looking at um, is systolic blood pressure. We're going to measure that for each individual. And the way we can summarize a numeric variable that we have for individuals is by using a mean. Are there are other options? Okay, but a mean is one that's quite commonly used. And we'll see in a moment, summarizing that using a mean allows us to work with linear regression. If we want to summarize a numeric variable using a median, that's where we'd work with something like quantile regression. So one of those extensions I said that we'll touch on in the course. If we're looking at some binary outcome variable, do you have a disease, yes or no? One of the more natural summaries is a proportion, right? or you can think of as a percentage. Right? What proportion I've got the uh, disease? If we're looking at the number of times something occurs, so the number of deaths or the number of births or the number of people who get a disease, we can summarize that most naturally using a rate. Right? For counting how many people got a certain disease over a month, we might look at the rate at which people are contracting disease. And if we're looking at the time till an event occurs, this one's one you don't really cover in an intro course and we haven't. You can look at something like a hazard rate. Okay, again, which is very similar to the idea of rate. When we get to this section of the course, Poisson regression and survival analysis, we'll try and tease these apart. They are very similar, and that's why in the course they've been lumped together in the same um, section of time where we're talking about these types of models. And time till event data or data that's a recorded over time. Yeah. Then, if these are the summaries, we might want something that can capture the effect that x1 has on y. And I'm going to state all of these where x1 is a 0, 1 type of variable. So what I mean by that is, suppose we have a numeric outcome like systolic blood pressure, and we're looking at people on treatment A or treatment B. The way we can try and capture the effect right, that treatment A versus treatment B has on that numeric outcome of blood pressure we can look at a difference in means or y1 bar minus y2 bar. Right. So again, what's the difference in the mean systolic blood pressure for group 1 versus group 2? Now what I want to draw you back to is in a standard intro course you learn about things like these, right? working with difference in means you do stuff like two sample t tests or comparing multiple means, analysis of variance, things like these. So you learned about interpreting these effects, building confidence intervals for them, um, and things like that. Now we're going to lean on that. Okay, we're actually going to see, well, maybe I'll add this in, in a second. When we're looking at some outcome that's binary, right, some have disease, yes or no, we can summarize that using a proportion. And if we want to measure the effect that x1 has on the outcome, we can use things like an odds ratio, which was p1 over 1 minus p1. 
at P1 being the probability of disease for group one. So again, if we're looking at, are you exposed, yes or no? Did you get a disease, yes or no? What's the probability of disease for exposed divided by probability of not disease for exposed? Right, so this is the odds of disease given exposed, or the odds of disease for group one, divided by P2 over one minus P2. And are the odds of disease for the unexposed. Okay. So odds ratio, again, was one way of trying to capture the um, effect of some X variable on some Y variable when they're both categorical. Okay, and again, in the standard intro course, you learn about odds ratios, how to calculate them, what their interpretation is, um, confidence intervals, hypothesis tests for them, and so on. So we've built all the knowledge of what an odds ratio is. Now we're going to lean on that when working with um, well, what we're going to label as logistic regression in a moment. When working with an outcome that's rate data, and again, if you want to compare rates for two different groups, right, what's the disease rate for vaccinated and unvaccinated? We can calculate things like relative rates or risk ratios or rate ratios. A lot of terms get thrown around for this. It's the rate for group one over the rate for group two. And one that we haven't really touched on, or you don't usually touch on in a standard intro course, but if you're looking at comparing time till event, right, time till death for exposed and unexposed, you can summarize that effect using a hazard ratio, which is the hazard for group one over the hazard for group two. Now, with all of these, we can think about what type of regression model could we use for them. Yeah. And so numeric outcomes, we summarize that using a mean. The estimate, the effect of x1 on y is going to be a difference in means when x is um, yes, no type variable. And there we can look at linear regression. And if you recall, uh, Standard intro course, you learn that y hat is b0 plus b1x1, or sometimes you can write this as the mean of y given x is b0 plus b1x1. And what I want to point out here is that this coefficient actually gives us y2 bar minus y1 bar. We care the difference in means. Right? How does the mean in y change for someone when x1 is 1 versus x1 being 0? Okay, and we'll look at this as we progress through the course, but this coefficient essentially gives us that difference in means. So what I want to show you is this coefficient gives you a difference in means, which you learned all about in an intro course. <coughs> okay. When we have binary outcomes, we can summarize those using proportions. We can also calculate odds ratios. To work with this, we can work with logistic regression. And logistic regression, there's two ways you can express the model. We can, I'm going to write this down. We're going to expand on these ideas as we go through the course. So if, if this has a little bit of notation that's unexplained right now, just run with it. But the log of the odds of the disease, or B0 plus B1, X1, and so on. And what we're going to find here is this coefficient, if we exponentiate it, that's going to give us an odds ratio. Okay, and again, odds ratio is something we learned all about in the um, intro course. You can also express the logistic regression model as P, the probability of disease, is E to the B0 plus B1, X1, over 1 plus e to the b0 plus b1x1, and so on. Okay, and so these are stuff we're going to build up when we get to talking about logistic. So don't worry if you're getting lost on this right now. This is mostly unexplained. Really just what I want to show you is that when we have a yes-no outcome, the way we'd summarize that is a proportion. And we can think of logistic regression as modeling that proportion 
as a logistic function of x is. Or we can also think of getting those effect size of odds ratios out of it when we think of modeling the log odds as a linear function. Okay, and these are all things we're going to expand on in the course. We're going to spend four weeks on this. Okay, so right now I'm just trying to preview where things are going. When we have outcomes that are the number of times some event occurs, we can summarize those with a rate. And we can look at Poisson regression there. And again, Poisson regression, we're going to model the log rate as a linear function of x's. And what we're going to see there is if we exponentiate this coefficient, it's going to give us a rate ratio. Again, something we learned all about in the intro stats course. We can also think as of Poisson regression as we're going to be modeling the rate using an exponential function, e to the b naught plus b1x1, and so on. And again, these are things we're going to talk all about when we get to talking about Poisson regression. And finally, if our outcome is how long till some event occurs, we can work with survival analysis, or survival regression. In particular, we're going to look at Cox proportional hazards regression model. And there again, without getting too stuck in um, some of the details, we can model the log hazard, b naught plus b1, x1, and so on. And what we're going to find is if we exponentiate this coefficient, it's going to give us a hazard ratio. Now, hazard ratio is something we don't talk much about in intro stats course, but it's very similar to um, odds ratios or rate ratios. There are some slight differences. As we progress through the course, we'll talk about how, how these are similar, where they differ, and I'll also uh, refer you to a paper that compares and contrasts the, the three of these. So that's kind of the big picture overview of the course and what it's all about. And what we're going to get into next is recapping some of the um, simple linear regression ideas that um, we learned in the previous course, and we're going to start off with those and then building our way into talking about linear regression for the next four weeks. Stick around, guys. There's more to see, and please stay safe.